Hi, I'm John Harris again, smallballsuccess.com, and this is part two of a video about how you can look at hitters in the on-deck circle and get a pretty good idea of what they'll be vulnerable to. This is, of course, for pitchers. Now, um, what happens with the guy who's an uppercut hitter? We call them now uh, launch angle hitters. There have always been a lot of guys like this, at least there were when I was growing up in the 50s and 60s, and it seems like they're really making a comeback. And they can start out like some of the guys we were, well, Bryce Harper's like this, you know, they're going to have the elbow pointing way up in the air, and it looks like maybe they're going to give the big pump and then get the foot down and swing the bat in that big roller coaster. But they're they're actually not they're they're those roller coaster his, hitters are really uh, more evenly distributed with their weight they're uh, really kind of hitting the ball as it comes up over the plate the sort of hitter I'm talking about who falls back he's uh, probably gonna take a you're probably not going to have that big of a leg kick anyway. He's, he's probably going to take a big long stride so that he can fall backward. He's more apt to keep the top end on the bat longer. And you see, this is what he wants to do. He wants that. See it better from this angle. He wants to come up at the ball. So. Where are you not going to pitch that guy? Well, of course you're not going to pitch him high because that's exactly what he wants you to do. And even if you pitch him inside, we talked so much last time in part one about pitching guys high and in when they have the roller coaster swing because chances are they're just going to dip under it or just nick it with the handle and not be able to do anything with it. But this is a guy who gets the barrel in its descent so quickly and get it gets it coming back up so quickly that even if you throw him in on his hands he's already got the barrel coming back up well if you're looking down from overhead if you're on that north side north south axis looking down at him and not looking from the side then I've got a plate here and I'll, I'll lower the camera in a minute but but you can see that he's really very early. That's why he's he's falling back, not really even taking a stride forward. He's just falling back on the back leg so he can get that barrel headed up. And he can take that inside pitch and unless you got a really good bat, a good fastball, there's a good chance that he can pull that. Now, the high inside fastball is still a good pitch against him because if it's if it's really inside and if he's kind of full of, of himself, you know, he's, he's kind of cocky and he's sure that he can pull anything. If you tease him on way on that inside corner, you're going to get a strike out of that because it's going to be a long, loud foul. He can't keep that ball fair if he hits it this far in front of the plate. So the, the high fastball on the inside corner, and be sure you don't let it leak out over the middle of the plate, but... If it's inside, that's still a good pitch to get a strike. You, you might not be able to strike him out on it. It's not, not going to get a swing and, and a miss on it, probably. But And again, this is a guy who's up on the plate, we can be pretty sure, these days. So you probably can't get him out high and outside either. He's got the whole uh, high part of the zone covered and everything. He's, he's launch, launch, launching. Now you would think that uh, you'd get him out low as well. And let me see if I can show you something here with the plate. I'll just drop the camera a little bit. The plate here, he's set naturally, like all the power hitters, he's set up way back in the box. So, what's going to happen when you pitch him low? Well, it could be good news or bad news. If it's inside, he can still reach that, and then he's able to launch it, to lift it up, and he might just keep that one fair. 
he's going to have to reach a little farther to get it. So he might not pull it so much and it might stay fair and that's what you don't want to have happen. So you probably, if you throw him low, you don't want to throw him uh, something hard. You want to throw him something that drops, something with a wrinkle in it or something that loses speed. What's going to happen there? Everything he's got is, is going up. So if he wants to contact the ball out in front of the plate, the barrel's already on its way up. By the time your ball is where he can reach it, and if your ball is dropping, he really can't reach it. His barrel is ascending too quickly. So pitch this guy down. And, and don't try to pitch him too hard. Uh, you can use something that's a little slower that's down, and especially on the outside corner, too, because then it's both farther away from his hands and it's slower. That's That low away corner is the pitchers, we guys who, guys who pitch just love that low outside corner, and that's why I, as a hitter, love to exploit the low outside corner, because so many pitchers will go there, and there's a good reason why they go there, because so many hitters can't hit that pitch. And this is a guy who can't hit that pitch. He's going to not only be jacking that barrel way up as he, he gets out there to the outside, but he's, he's got to reach farther for it. The barrel has come down. It's already started up. He's not going to hit that pitch. So, low and away with off-speed stuff, uh, throw it high and inside by all means, but be careful and uh, do that maybe to get a strike, knowing that he's, he's going to pull it foul. But even that is just, you, you better have a good fastball. I'd say uh, off-speed and, and low and away. Now, let's look at one last type. Let's talk about a guy who, see a lot of these nowadays too, the kid who likes to really spread out. <laughs> I don't know what the virtue is, of this is, but you see a lot of it. I, I think it's kind of a residue of uh, Charlie Lau pedagogy. It's, it's, uh, I'm afraid I kind of got my kid doing this when he was a youngster, and I, I wish I could have a do-over on that one, but uh, this is uh, supposed to be real quick, I guess, isn't it? It's, your, feet are, your feet are so far away that you don't have to take a stride. It's just all hands here. This is supposed to make you a really good contact hitter. Um, I think I would say exactly the opposite about that. Because the feet are so widespread, the hands are going to be a little slow to the ball. Uh, you may find that counterintuitive, but it, it's not really if you think about it. Hands are faster if they can tap into energy that's being channeled to them from the lower body. When you immobilize your lower body, your hands are going to have to slow down. I, I guess I don't know many coaches who understand that, because this is a thing that a lot of coaches will teach, even a two-strike thing. When you get two strikes, just use your hands. But a guy who's all spread out in the box is going to have to be mostly hands. He's just kind of rocking back with his hips, but he's, and he's probably going to finish one-handed. You're just going to have to kind of fling the bat at the ball. Now, this probably is a good contact hitter because he's, he's very mobile on his hips, on the balls of his feet. His knees are going, and he can just sort of reach out wherever the ball dips, wherever it goes. If you pitch him that low away pitch, he can probably chase it out there. Let me lower my camera again. We'll look at the plate. The low away pitch as a strikeout pitch is not necessarily so effective on this guy because, as I say, he can, he can go everywhere. So, you think you got him beat, and now look what he's, he can, he can uh, rake the grass almost, and that's uh, four or five inches off the plate. He can really go out there and he can keep his balance because he's so spread out. So he's a pesky hitter. He can bloof some singles in. He can uh, probably, if he's been doing this a while and he's succeeded at it, he's fast. He gets out of the box in a hurry. Uh, so he'll put it on the ground and he'll run. Um, 
I would throw that guy, I would throw him high. I'd throw him fast stuff high. I just don't think he can all spread out like this. I don't think he can get around. And he's, he's going to, you know, he's going to have that dip that, I, I'll, I don't know when I've seen a guy spread out that much who has his hands down here in his back armpit. So his hands, again, are going to be up above his shoulder. And when he does that, he's going to have to come down more than the guy who holds his bat down here. So he's going to have a dip in his swing. And if your ball is letter high, he's he'll be coming down about the time that he needs to make contact. He'll just swing under it, as well as probably be late on it because he doesn't have much juice coming from lower down to get the bat moving. On the other hand, he'll be, you know, he might really tie into one that's low and inside, as I just showed you there in that last cut. He's, he's, uh, it may even be kind of a mistake that you make, or a mistake that he may, he's not even looking for it there, but he can, he can sort of one-hand it, and the, the barrel just falls into that pitch that's low and inside. So I would not, I would be careful of pitching him there. I'd go high and hard with him. Uh, I wouldn't be afraid of him with my fastball. If you don't have a good fastball, if you've been getting all these big, strong guys out with your breaking stuff, and you're trying to throw him the same stuff and get him out, well, you, you could do it, but maybe get ahead of him first, unless he's real aggressive. Just tease him a little bit, and then throw him something that's almost in the dirt. And even though he has that great reach, that he can almost dig something out of the grass, he's also all spread out. So, he's just going to, you know, along about, if you're almost throwing it in the dirt, he's done about here. His barrel's going to have to cycle back up and he's going to swing over that pitch. So you can you can be real aggressive up in the zone and then you can play with him. If you can get ahead of him, I, again, I don't think you, in most situations you don't have to be too afraid of the guy because he's not a power threat. Now, you can, I'm not, at the moment I don't plan to do part three on this, but you can if you just watch hitters, you can make up your own little book on how to get guys out according to how they stand and how they swing the bat. And I would encourage you pitchers, uh, still in metal bat leagues, most of you guys are getting it at bat. You may be really good hitters too. Sometimes when pitchers get more advanced, of course, they stop paying attention to the hitting game as offensive players. But I think that's a mistake. If you're a pitcher continue to practice your hitting and, and be a good smart hitter if you can because you know what the, the more you know about hitting the more you can learn about pitching if you get to be a good hitter you can think like a hitter and then you can carry that over into your pitching and you can use that to get them out 